Manchester City have won the Champions League, but no one feels a thing. Have we become numb to the drama and the beauty of football, the game we love? What about the players and the staff that have been working towards this six-year goal since Pep has taken over Man City of the Champions League? Does the money or ethical issues behind Manchester City's success mean football has been permanently tainted? Or is there now a disconnect between a football club as an organisation, an institution and a football team, the one the supporters try to associate with on the pitch? Look, I'm going to try and answer all of these questions in today's video, rationalise with both sides of the argument in support of Man City, but also being critical over the larger implications of their 1-0 victory over Inter Milan in the Champions League final last night. Um, and muse, I think, over how we as football fans should feel in the aftermath of their triumph. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. First and foremost, Manchester City under Pep Guardiola are undoubtedly and have undoubtedly been project. Um, all working towards the common goal of winning City's first Champions League, okay? And it's culminated versus Inter Milan. But the feeling feels like more relief than exaltation. Why? Well, City have suffered at the hands of the unpredictable European gods for the last few years now. Those chaotic, singular moments, impossible moments that comes in these games, whether there's one counter-attack or a completely unforeseeable own goal, unexplainable miss like Sterling's versus Leon, um, or an unescapable opponent that just seems to have your number. Uh, that might have been that may have been Tuchel in 2021, um, or just an inability to control your destiny in the Champions League. That Pep's model has done domestically. So look, he can impose control over every single game in the Premier League, but for some reason in 2019 against Spurs, Son and Raheem Sterling both scored twice in the first 20 minutes, and the game's 2-2. Um, but City's win now may signal the end of this beauty, this inability to recapture certain moments. Because if you throw the best resources, the best players, the best manager, the best staff, the best infrastructure at a particular goal, it's now achievable and it's now inevitable, it seems. From an outside perspective, it felt like after Christmas, it all came together for Manchester City this season. But I think last night's win has become much more inevitable than just a project. And I think that's the core issue here. Any uncertainty has been negated as much as possible for this Manchester City team. Of course, there were never, never any foregone conclusions. Um, as my previous video on how Man City won the Champions League final made clear. Inter forced Man City to play their A game. But like I said, by throwing all the resources possible, to that goal of the Champions League. The algorithm has become as predictable, I think, as humanly possible now. For all its unpredictable outcomes, that seems now slightly hampered. There is a solution that has been found and proved, and ultimately that's money. Pep called this competition a coin toss in his interview with BT Sport after the win, and I totally agree. It has been. But now if you somehow find a way to weight that coin so it lands on your side nine times out of ten, it takes away the magic. And that inevitable football project seems to have been completed. You know, it's, it seemed more like destiny. And I think that has undermined all the work that has gone on behind the scenes. But is there another side to this story? I think there might be. Everyone, like I've just done, can choose to lump in on Manchester City. But how is this different from, say, a Real Madrid, the 14 times winners? The Galactico of European and world football, not free from allegations themselves, even if not as prominent as Manchester City's 115 breaches 
in financial fair play. But what about them? Because they're certainly not an untainted, untainted football club. And then what about the players themselves, the staff, Pep himself? It doesn't make them any less brilliant as they are. They're ultimately fully deserved winners. And after all the heartache, all the toil, they deserve this. Um, and I felt that as I was watching the match last night. Um, there was this undoubted feeling that Manchester City deserve this. I mean, what are the fans meant to do? Another group that didn't ask for any of this behind the scenes business. Just the same as the players. You know, the players, they play for the manager on the pitch. Um, they have no power over the situation. And that's why I come back to the word inevitable. This result tonight was made as inevitable as possible. And by definition, this means out of control, out of the players' control, out of the fans' control. I mean, what do we do as fans now? Is the idea of the 12th man dead as well? I'm not sure. Well, I think that's the crux of it. That's why this win feels so weird because we are on the verge here of potentially the greatest ever modern day club side. But this football team, this incredibly well built and composed football team, their achievements seem to be not acknowledged in relation to the football club, to Manchester City. It's a group of players, not a football club success, if that makes sense. And for some people, not even a football club success, but an overseas funded programme. So this is what bothers people. Of course, there's jealousy as well. But with all the context, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like a football club success. Um, it doesn't feel special to the outside world, as it should do. As it should do, I want it to be, even as an Arsenal fan. This is a final where the tension was literally burning through this, the screen. You had Man City, potentially treble winners. All this talk, all this pressure on the outside. This gruelling season of football against an Inter Milan, potentially at a crossroads themselves between a prosperous and historic future if they were to win. But also the slow feeling that they themselves and the group of players were on the decline. And Inzaghi was trying to get the absolute maximum out of them. This tension throughout the whole 90 minutes was burning through the screen. Yet no one could feel it. Or no one could understand why it was there. And for this very reason, I want to commend Manchester City. I want to hit home that we should, as football fans, commend Manchester City. Disregard the charges and the background noise for a second. As a, as a group of players and as a manager, they've had the treble talk for the last month now, echoing, not just echoing, reverberating in the background. A season of endless, ceaseless games with a World Cup planted right in the middle of it. A relentless composition of games and they've continued to essentially win every single one. It's fallen into place for them. It's destiny and fair play because they're deserved winners and treble winners. And it's sad that this may not be what the group is remembered for. They may be undermined by the football club, the institution, Manchester City, that towers above them. Again, it's not the fans fault or the players fault. In football now, there's this disconnect between a football team, as in the group of players, the staff that make it up, the manager that makes it up, the fans that support them week in, week out. There's a disconnect between the football team and the football club. And that's whether or not the owners are likable people or they invest themselves in the day-to-day -day goings on. That's the problem with football now. There's a disconnect between the club as a whole. As a whole, it is fractured. The supporters stand alone with the players and staff, but fight a battle on their own in defending both the players on the pitch and the club off the pitch. You know, I'll, I'll end by saying this. Um, we should definitely commend Man City because they're a wonderful football team. Maybe even the best. But what's an underdog story anymore? Um, it's one that has, at times, defined the Champions League and European competitions, cup competitions, knockout football 
um, in general. That's why everyone was so hyped up, if you will, about the Milan derby, about the prospect of Napoli potentially reaching the final, having three Italian clubs in the latter stages of the Champions League. So to go back is an underdog story, one built from nothing, uh, a galvanising of a community, or are the foundations built from seemingly nothing, as if by magic, but that magic is really something called money, uh, that intangible spell that can be cast and quite literally materialise anything out of anywhere. So that's what that's the question I want to leave you with, because we're at a very weird place, I think, right now, where, like I say, the football club as a whole and the football team are not one, even if they try desperately to be. Um, and often that's no one's fault, certainly not um, the F Manchester City's fans' fault. It's not their players' fault that they're, they've copped all of this aggression on social media and frustration for uh, following this Champions League win. So that's what I wanted to end it with. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe and share this video because I want to create a community to engage with this. I really do because I think it's very important. But look, thank you very much. See you in the next one. Bye for now.